So now that we have the server up and running, and we're running PHP through Nginx, and we have MySQL set up, we need somewhere now to push our code to. So I'm going to create a repository on GitLab, and this is completely free. So you can sign up with GitLab and create as many repositories as you like. If you want to use something else like GitHub or Bitbucket, then feel free. I'm going to be using GitLab in this series. So we want to just give this project a name. So I'm just going to call mine Laravel Deploy Test. We don't need to give it a description. And you can set it to private or public, depending on whether you want other people to see it or not. For purposes of this demo, it doesn't really matter so much. I'll just leave the default as private. And then click Create Project. Now, when you create a repository on GitLab, it gives you all the details you need to set up your repository on your local machine. So to be able to push code up to GitLab, you need to give it your SSH key. So if you come up to your account and click on Settings, and on the left-hand side here, you have your SSH keys. You can see I've already got mine added in here. So to add yours, you just paste your public key. So that is the ID underscore RSA.pub, which is the default name for it. So make sure it's your public key and not your private key. Paste it in there and then add key. And then your local machine will have permissions to push and pull to any of your repositories that you've made. So because we did a git pull, we've already got a git repository attached to our folder. So we need to follow these bottom steps down here. Let's just copy these commands and paste them in. So in our application folder on our local machine, we need to rename the remote origin to old origin. And the next thing we need to do is add a new origin. And this is the newly created repo we just created on GitLab. And now we want to push everything up to that origin. And then the final command is to push everything with tags. So now we copy and pasted them four commands in. Let's head over to our repository and give this a refresh. So as you can see now, the project is up into GitLab. So now we need to take a look at our server and we need to work out a way that our server can pull down from this repository. So like in our previous video, let's SSH into the server. And we want to SSH in using the user we created in the previous video. We don't want to SSH in as root. So now that we're on the server, we want to create a new user. And we're going to use this user purely for pulling down from the repository. So let's do a sudo add user. And I'm just going to call this user deploy. And then again, we just go through the standard user creation that we did in the earlier videos. So enter a password and then you can just hit enter. You don't have to fill these details in if you don't want to. The next thing we need to do is add deploy to the sudoers group. So we can do sudo user mod. And again, this is exactly the same set of commands that we did in a previous video where we created our first user. User mod and we want the flags ag and we want them to go into group sudo and the user we want to put in there is deploy. Okay, so now we should be able to switch user to deploy. So if we just do su, which stands for switch user, and we want to switch to deploy. Now put the password in we just created for that user. And you can see now we've changed from user mark to user deploy. So now as our deploy user, we will need to give ourselves some permissions to be able to read, write, and edit project files. So the reason for this is when you create a new server, in our case Nginx here, it creates a new user to run under. And that user is www.data. And the reason why it does this is so it's isolated. So if somebody gets access to the www.data user for whatever reason, they've only got access to that part of the system. And that's the strength with Linux permissions and groups. And we can actually see that in action. So if we just list out the running processes on our system, and to do that, it's a PS space AUX. And then if we just give it a pipe, which is the vertical line character, and then we say grep, and we want to grep for Nginx. And grep is just basically like a search. It will filter down the output of PS AUX and just list the lines that contain the word Nginx. So if we just hit enter on this, now, you might have more processes running here than I do, but you should have at least two. You'll have a master process, which is this line here, and you also have at least one worker process. So the master process of Nginx just handles the config and things like that, and it's in charge of spawning the worker processes. And the worker processes here are what actually handles the request. So when you make a request to the server, a worker process will be the one that handles that. And you can see here, the worker process line here is owned by www.data. So for our current user deploy, they need to be able to have permissions that the www.data user has. So if we just list out the groups that we've got on our system, and to do that, we can just do a cat, and then we can do forward slash etc, forward slash group. 
and this will show us all the groups in our system. And you see here our new users Mark and Deploy both have their groups created for them. There's also groups that are here for the other system software such as MySQL down here. But we also have the DubDub data group. So what we want to do is add our deploy user to the DubDub data group. And then with the correct file permissions, our deploy user will be able to edit any files that belong to the DubDub data group. So to do that, it's a similar process as adding somebody to the sudo group. So we need to call sudo first. So we've got super user privileges. And we want to call the user mod program like we did last time. And we also want to pass the AG flags again. So lowercase a, capital G, just like we did last time. But this time, instead of adding them to the sudo group, we want to add them to the dub 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 data group. And then finally, what user do we want to add? And um, we want to add our deploy user. So a little shortcut I want to show you here is within Linux, there's certain variables you can use. And one of them is user, and that is a shortcut for the current user. So how to use that is we just take off the deploy user here and enter a dollar sign and then user and hit enter. It'll ask for our password for our deploy to ensure that we've got the super user privileges. And there we go, that's done. So that variable there, user, basically just takes whatever the current user is, which in our case here, we're logged in as deploy. So it's took deploy and it's added it to the dub dub data group. So the next thing we need to do is modify our Nginx configuration for use with Laravel. So back over in our terminal, we want to edit our configuration file. And if we just cd into that folder first, so it's cd forward slash etc forward slash nginx forward slash sites available. And then if we just do an ls here, we can see we currently have the default configuration file. So in this tutorial, we're only having one site on this server, but there's a chance you might have multiple sites. So for the sake of being verbose, we're going to remove this default config and create a new one for our site. So first of all, let's remove that default config. So we want to unlink it from the site's enabled folder. That's just removing the symbolic link. So to do that, we can do a sudo unlink and then just say what we want to unlink. So we want to unlink from the etc folder, nginx, sites enabled, and we want to unlink that default config. So now that's unlinked, we can just delete that file now from our sites available folder. So obviously we're already in that folder, so we can just do a sudo rm and then just remove that default. If we just do an ls again, we shouldn't see now our folder is empty. So let's create our new config file now. We want to create a config with our domain. So at the moment I haven't got a domain for this because obviously it's just a tutorial. So I'm just going to make one up called yourdomain.com. Obviously you'll name this config after your own site so it's easy to recognize. We can just do a sudo and we want to do a nano and then give the config a name. So obviously I'm just going to use yourdomain.com here, but you use the name of your website and then just hit enter. And what we can do is we can head over to the Laravel documentation and they have a default Nginx config in the documentation that we can use. So over in the Laravel documentation on the left hand side under getting started deployment, you can see here they have a default Nginx config that we can copy in. Let's just copy and paste this over. I'm just going to paste this in here. And then we can mostly leave this alone, but there's a couple of things that we'll want to change. So we want to change the root. So this is where we're going to store our website. So we're going to be storing this in forward slash var, forward slash dub dub dub, forward slash HTML. And then we're going to be storing this in a folder named after our website. So in my case here, I'm going to put yourdomain.com. But obviously you put the name of the folder after the name of your website. I'm also going to change the server name here to the my domain, which in this case is yourdomain.com, but obviously you change this to yours. So we'll just let an Nginx know here if it wants to run our project, it can find our files in yourdomain.com forward slash public folder. And that is where the default index page is in a Laravel application. So as mentioned in the previous video, when editing our test configuration, you need to make sure the PHP socket number matches your PHP version. So in this case, we've got 7.2, which is fine for our Ubuntu 18.04 install. But if you're using another version of PHP, then you need to set this socket accordingly. So if we just save this now with control O and then hit enter to write that file, and then control X to exit. If we just do an LS again, we can see we now have our new config file. And this is in our sites available folder. 
had to mention before, this site's available, it's just sites that are available on this server. Nginx doesn't actually load them unless it's in the sites enabled folder. So what we do here, we create a symbolic link, which is just like a virtual link, like if you're creating a shortcut on your desktop, for example. And what this does is it creates a link in sites enabled over to our config here in sites available. So let's create that link. So we need super user privileges to do this. So we need sudo. And then we're going to use the ln application, which stands for link. I'm going to pass this to das s flag. And this is just saying we want to create a symbolic link. So like a virtual link rather than a hard link. Then we just need to tell it what we want to link and where we want to link it to. So we want to link etc nginx sites available. And then we want to link our config, which is yourdomain.com in my case. And then where do we want to link this to? We want to link it to the sites enabled folder. So that's an etc nginx sites enabled. And that then creates the virtual link for us. So let's just check that. So if we just cd up a directory, so you can do that with dot dot, and then cd into sites enabled, and then just do an ls. We can see now there is a link to our config file in the sites enabled folder. So when we restart nginx in a moment, it will look in this folder and load up any configs that are in here. As before, when we edit a default config, two things we want to do. We want to test our configs. So we can do a sudo nginx t and that tests our configs and it says the test is successful so we know our config doesn't have any errors in it and then finally reload nginx so we do a sudo system ctl reload nginx now if we come over to our browser and on our ip address if we just do a refresh we can see we get an error message from nginx saying file not found and that's because it's loaded up our new config so we know our new config is working now but it's looking for a folder that doesn't exist. So in the next video, let's create this folder and then pull our code down from GitLab and get the project set up on our server.